Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, October 18th. Thank you so much for joining in to our weekly healthcare reform webinars. My name is Deb Wilkinson. I'm the Vice President of the Health Plan Options Department at URL. My duties include overseeing the traditional group markets for small, mid, and large, as well as, as self-funding, reference-based pricing products, the short-term medical, and as I say always, what is left of the individual market in Pennsylvania. And on that note, I do have some, I think, some encouraging news on the individual uh, and family platform that I'll share in the webinar. Um, questions are encouraged. If you're new to the format, I encourage questions so that uh, we all know. We all can find out what's being asked in the in the uh, in the field, and you know, help each other out uh, by having a forum that hopefully you can come to and, and get those answers. So you can ask questions in one of two ways. You can raise your hand icon. It's in the control panel to the right of your screen. Or you can type questions in the question box, and I'll answer those at the end of the webinar. So just with a quick show of hands, if you can hear me OK and see my screen, I would appreciate a hands up. Excellent. Thank you all. All right, I'll put your hands down now. And let's get right into the agenda. We do have quite a bit to talk about today. Um, for those of you that are still in the in individual and family platform, open enrollment uh, starts 11-1. That's 13 days from now. That runs 11-1 to 12-15. The training and healthcare.gov articles um, are in my newsletter again this week. Uh, just to be mindful of the maintenance shutdown every Sunday, 12 to 12, except for the last Sunday. They did this last year, and it's scheduled for about 60 hours of downtime, but what they said last year, they only ended up with about 21 hours of downtime. Um, but it is a short selling season, and that is the only opportunity outside of an individual or family having a qualifying event to get affordable care coverage. Um, Friday, October 26th, which is next Friday, a hearing will take place to argue for suspension of the new short-term limited duration medical insurance rule, which expanded short-term medical from an 89-day um, limit to a 364-day limit. So that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, President Trump signed into law uh, Senate 2553 and Senate 2554, these are laws that ban the gang, gag clause that prevents pharmacists or prevented pharmacists from telling customers that they can save money by paying out of pocket versus using their insurance. And it also allows pharmacists to provide complete pricing information uh, to Medicare Part D folks and Medicare Advantage insureds. So I think that's, that's some uh, encouraging news for most that you know, struggle with those, those hefty insurance prices, uh, I'm sorry, uh, prescription prices. Uh, individual tax penalty in 2019, we talked about this often, but uh, just a reminder for the 2019 tax year, which is starting January 1st with open enrollment, the individual tax penalty is zero. So it's still, it still stands, but as this year, they get 695 or 2.5% um, tax penalty for 2018 tax year. Next year, they still have the requirement of having Affordable Care Act coverage, qualified coverage, except if they don't, the penalty is zero. Um, so essentially, it's, it's gone, but I uh, wanted to make that distinction. Nevertheless, Devin Nunes and Mike Kelly from Pennsylvania recently introduced a bill to suspend the employer mandate. So there's a lot of scuttlebutt about possibly eliminating that uh, 51 plus employer mandate, which could uh, really benefit all of us, especially with the reporting. Uh, if the employer mandate is gone, there's no sense in reporting, especially if the tax penalty is zero. So that's encouraging news. I'll keep watching that. The Senate voted 50-50 to overturn the short-term plan final rule that expanded it from 89 days to 364, but it fell one vote short to advance to the House. They say that it most likely would have failed in the House as well, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, Pennsylvania patients, this is um, one that is just in. 
Pennsylvania patients will no longer need to seek advance approval to prescribe medication that assists in treatment for substance use, substance use disorder. Um, the carriers are Aetna, Capital, Geisinger, Highmark, Independence, UPMC, and United Healthcare. They've all agreed to remove the requirement for the um, advanced approval. So I think that's probably encouraging to those folks that um, have been affected by, you know, the, uh, the issues at hand with um, drug abuse. There is repeal chatter again. Um, you know, it could be just a political sort of, of uh, message sent out there. But, um, you know, if the Republicans win big in the House and Senate, of course, then, it, then uh, Mitch McConnell, Speaker McConnell, is talking about um, repeal again of the ACA. So we'll see where that goes. But at this point, it's not going anywhere, and certainly until after the midterms. Um, 2019 regular to, regulatory changes are in the works. I think this is pretty interesting. They include changes that could impact health insurance exchanges, patient privacy, Medicaid coverage, and food labeling, plus 188 more items that will be reviewed for changes. Um, they say that some of them would be um, update Medicaid's drug rebate program to include regulations that promote value base. Uh, purchasing arrangements, and let me see, um, advanced rules that could make it easier for drug companies to seek approval of generic versions of pricey biotech meds. So there's a lot of things um, that are kind of in the works and on a regulatory uh, basis that could definitely impact uh, sales for your seniors, your under 65 individuals and families, as well as groups. So again, we'll keep watching that. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., Nancy Vandervelde, uh, the Regional Sales Manager for National General, will be having our webinar to really go in-depth on the National General short-term limited duration insurance. So she's going to talk about the product, which uh, Phil Mishler talked about a couple weeks back as a, a you know, just a quick update. She's going to go more in-depth. She's also going to show everyone the website, how to run quotes, what to expect from beginning to end on the enrollment process. Um, so if you are interested in the limited duration insurance, then I would encourage you to sign up for that webinar that is 10 a.m. tomorrow. If you can't make it to the webinar, please sign up still because you'll get the recording and that way you'll stay uh, informed on what I think is a pretty viable product for the right folks um, this year. Cat Blue Cross, uh, many of you on this call received our email from yesterday. They have a new broker of record requirement. Of course, that was new as of 2017, um, but please be mindful of it. Um, the message was sent out just, you know, as a proactive courtesy. The best time to to get new BORs, obviously, is during renewal season, and most renewals are 12-1 and 1-1. However, if you previously worked with URL and received the list that we received, the list of groups that we received from Capital that have they have identified that have not sent in a new, an updated BOR, um, please know that any BOR will not change anything about your current general agency appointment. Um, if you're no longer with URL, that will not change with any new BOR, and it wouldn't change any current commission payments that uh, you have. So it is really just a formality. There's not a deadline that has been announced. Again, we were just trying to be proactive. So for that, I apologize for any confusion, but um, you know, again, it is something that has to be done, and they will be coming out with a deadline. And once that deadline comes and goes, then what they're saying is commissions would be cut off. So again, you work hard for your money, take care of the BORs, but again, it's a busy time of year, um, no deadline yet. ASO level funded plans with capital are now uh, down to five lives, and that's starting with 12 one effective dates. We can quote those for you. Another bit of information from our carriers, Highmark sent out marketing brochures on renewals from another Blue Cross Blue Shield health plan. 
that went to approximately 2,600 group clients in Pennsylvania. We were actually one of them. So if your groups receive information from an out-of-state blues plan, um, obviously it's not the correct plan. And uh, just, again, remember that that it's not the right plan and, and hopefully you've already addressed that with, with your clients if they called you. Um, UPMC fall producer kickoff that was scheduled for Friday, November 9th in Pittsburgh has been canceled. They are going to reschedule it at some point, but at this point there's no, um, no date on the schedule for, for that meeting. I will let you know when they reschedule. Hi, Mark. Uh, commission information, the individual block, the agent compensation for 2019 individual plans is in the um, the newsletter, I'm sorry, the Highmark newsletter, and remember that's an 80-20 split. So the Highmark information is the full amount that it is split 80-20. Of course, you, our valued agent partners, are getting the 80% of the figure. The entire agent compensation um, with agent portion is actually attached. The I have a Word document attached. So the only carrier missing from that list is UPMC, and um, they are supposed to release that information on Monday. So uh, again, pull out that handout for your agent compensation on the individual and short-term medical. And if you have questions, let me know. Or if you can't pull it up, let me know, and I'm happy to email it to you as well. Cat Blue Cross, their ASO program, uh, their surf plus split is going to be changed, effective 1-1-19 for new and renewing ASO business. If the settlement calculation results in a surplus, 50% of the surplus, surplus will be retained by capital, um, and 50% will be returned to the group via premium credit as long as the group remains with capital. It was previously 70-30. So this is a big change. Um, please be mindful of it when you're renewing your groups or enrolling new groups. That's an important point to make. Um, so just uh, know that that information is out there and um, properly advise your group clients. Cat Blue Cross Individual 2019 Dental Plans. The new plans in 2019 will have waiting periods, whereas the 2018 plans do not. So maybe if you have an individual or family that is looking for dental and, quite frankly, the vision plan, you may want to enroll them 12-1 as opposed to 1-1 so that the plans do not have waiting periods, the dental plans. Um, more information on that is coming out once the 19 plans are available, but I did want to at least mention that while there's still time to maybe uh, preemptively get those uh, folks enrolled for 12-1 versus 1-1. One, one. Um, Anthem is going to pay $16 million for the data breach from 2015. 79 million people had their information exposed. And the check goes to HHS, which I found quite, quite um, shocking. But, uh, you know, it is a fine. It's the largest data breach in U.S. history is what they're saying. So, um, a lot of money for a big mistake. And let's see, November 1st, Highmark will be a guest speaker on this webinar to give a quick update on the 2019 plans. So that is not next Thursday, but it's the following Thursday. Hopefully you can join into that webinar. And speaking of our webinars, uh, for January 1st, uh, the, and starting in January, our Gemini partners um, will have a new format. The Weekly webinars are going to be reserved for our Gemini partners. It's a place where our Gemini partners can come to share sales ideas, product, and legislative news. And then um, our Aries Valued Partners will still have that opportunity to join a monthly sales webinar. And you know the same items will be discussed, new opportunities, new products, legislative updates, and sales ideas as well. So, um, that's our new format in starting in 2019. If you have questions on that, please reach out to me and, and I can explain uh, why we're doing that. If you are on this call, at, that means you're probably in the health markets for individual under 65, group health, as well as possibly Medicare, um, but you may not 
expand into annuities or into the life markets, or you might be a Medicare agent that doesn't expand into the group markets. We have platforms for that. Our Orion platform allows you to expand your offerings to your client base and, and also increase your client base by handing over those um, quote unquote referrals uh, to us and we handle everything from start to finish and you are part of the revenue share. So it's definitely a way to uh, further promote yourself, obviously expand your client base as I mentioned and of course more, most importantly uh, expand your revenue. Open discussion is now at us, uh, so if you have any questions, if you want to raise your hand, I can unmute you, or you can type it into the block, and our next webinar will be Thursday the 8th, oh, I'm sorry, it is the 18th, it will be Thursday the 25th, my apologies, uh, next Thursday, so just know I'll be back here at the same time, um, same place. So let's see, questions. Did you send, uh, David's asking if I sent the sign up link for Nancy, uh, I did. It's in, a news, it, it's in the newsletter, Dave. And Dave says, do the Cat Blue Cross ASO underwritten quotes require IMQs? Um, you know what, Dave, I'm not sure about that. Um, you may wanna check on that with your uh, general agency. Nate. Does the CBC ASO surplus change effective with effect 12-1 renewals or renewals after 1-1? It's new and renewing business as of 1-1. It should not affect the 12-1 renewals. Um, Eric is asking about required training for the under 65 individual market. Capital and Highmark do not have required training, um, so that is not available yet. They're, you know, here it is the 18th of October and we start in 13 days and we still have no information. Highmark did put out like a training module where it has all the information, but Capital has not put out anything like that yet. Hopefully they'll have it soon. Um, Nate says, is appointment of UPMC for group and individual open? Um, absolutely, yeah, you can get appointed, Nate. If you wanna do that, just shoot me an email or tell me that you want me to do that and we'll have our Director of Licensing, Tish White, will get that taken care of for you. So that is, appears to be all of our questions. And as always, I thank you so much for joining in. And if you have questions, goodness gracious, these screens. If you have questions, you can reach me at 800-926-8875, extension 113, or you can email me, debw at urlinsgroup.com. As always, thank you so much for your partnership and your business. And I wish all of you a great balance of the week and a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.